So what's up fellow journeyers? We are uh, pumped to be where we're at for multiple reasons and multiple things you're gonna see this video. First of which, we're finishing decking out the, uh, the solar and the lithium on the rig. Mike with the dry campers is here working on it. On the intro, you guys probably saw where we were actually at a different site, which was actually just that site right over there. And so this is a multi-day deal, putting the install in that we're putting in. But we had that site, we saw this river site open up. And we're like, man, I didn't really wanna move. Marissa made the mistake of coming and looking at it. And uh, <laughs> I think it's been worth it. This is a beautiful site. So today's video is not primarily about Thousand Trails. We're referencing it because we're here. It's more or less about how much solar and lithium or battery power do you really need when you're RVing? And the way I want to break this down is to look at it with maybe three different kinds of RVers, their needs. Uh, first of all, you've got the overnighter. Maybe you just want enough lithium or solar power to stay overnight somewhere if you need to. Maybe two nights, but you're looking like if you need to stop at a Walmart, you know, Harvest Host, Boondockers Welcome, or if you just got a really sweet boondock in sight and you wanna just stay a couple of nights. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got what I would call like maybe the boondockers. And they're just like, they're the ones that go out to court site. Maybe they stay for weeks or maybe they stay for months. <laughs> they got the constant sun coming in. They're not hooked up at all. Um, they're just doing this for long periods of time and long to me is like weeks, possibly even months at once. And then in the middle, you've got us. I would call us maybe like a, like tweeners. <laughs> so like there are times we went to Alaska, uh, we would boondock for a week straight. Every once in a while, two weeks straight. And sometimes maybe we just like having this that the power goes out. If we wanna do a quick overnight at Walmart or we are not all in on either one of these levels, but we still like having the solar and lithium so that we have the flexibility between those two levels. And so I believe how much solar you have, how much battery power you have, I think it plays into maybe where you're at as far as how often you're gonna be off the grid in one of these three levels. So one of the things that's pretty cool about this campground that I did not know about, actually almost until we got here, uh, is that you can find shark teeth. Our camper's right over here. You can walk down this path right here. Then right here's a little uh, beach area that you can sift through the river, Peace River, and you can find shark teeth. Oh, that's cool. That is a piece of a turtle shell. You see like the texture on it uh -huh, yeah. on that one side? That's the turtle true. shell. I've heard the words Megalodon thrown around. Don't know if that's true. I've never seen one. Beep, beep. Good throw. JJ is all about these trees, man. What do you think about all these trees? A new tree. That is a tree. Wow. Bye tree. Bye tree. Bye tree. Bye tree. Bye tree. Bye tree. There's trees everywhere. I think as far as an overnighter, when it comes to RVers and how much lithium slash solar do you need, I really don't think it's that much. Uh, for a lot of people, the equation, especially if you wanna go lithium, is like one 100 amp hour battery per day or definitely per night. Uh, now that equation is kind of thrown off a little bit if you have a residential fridge, you might wanna bump that up to an extra one. So you might just be looking at one lithium battery, two lithium batteries, if you're, you're an overnighter, I think, as far as how many batteries you wanna have. And as far as solar panels, I wouldn't put the money into the solar panels at first, personally. I would put the money into a generator, even if it's just like a 2000 watt, 2200 watt generator, because there's gonna be so much more flexibility with that generator versus having, and the time and energy to mount those panels on the rig. If you're gonna get panels, um, after the generator, because that's how it prioritizes things, uh, you might get like one or 200 watts ish of like the, the portable ones you can set up and then point toward the sun when you need to and just kind of storm away afterwards. Hey, JJ, come check out this tree. Wow. JJ. Peekaboo. Oh, peekaboo. <laughs> Thank you. 
And so where we're at as far as this install, you guys will know like a couple months back, we did like a mini install video uh, with a couple of batteries, really more toward that uh, overnight camper um, kind of mindset. So what Mike's doing now is his OCD. You basically don't have to do this. You can, <laughs> you can actually just be done right now. They're dropped in and connect them, but Mike wants it to look clean. This is our, uh, our tweener layout we've got right now. We've got four, are these 330s, Mike? Or 320s? 330s, okay. So four 330 watt panels, so 1,320 watts. And these are 200-ish a piece. So you're looking at like, you know, 60, 70 cents per watt when you get these large panels like this. So this, this part on the roof is pretty much done. And we have, you know, if we did decide, you know, to go the, I'm gonna talk about the, the full boondocking route, you know, as an RVer, we can add, I think we have placement for four more panels up here. So we can double that 1,320 to 2,640 if we want to. I think as far as the ratio, um, if we talked about the overnighter versus if you go on the other end of the spectrum with the uh, the boondocker so if you're looking to stay off the grid for weeks maybe months at a time uh you know out of 365 days a year you've got you know 180 plus days you're off grid you may be looking at doing something like this or even more solar than this uh, let's say you have six 100 amp hour battleborne batteries you're looking at at least 1200 watts of solar uh, and really, you know, you got to factor in for cloudy days. I mean, if you want to run the AC every day, let's say for a few hours or five hours, you probably want to at least double that uh, to make sure you've got enough solar coming in to keep up with the AC. Right, so we just got the dongle installed on the Multi Plus. I'm going to talk to Marissa about the dongle later. I'll let you guys know why when we do that. It's just, it's just fine. We got low voltage here. Uh, we're at 108, only pulling 17 amps ish. Mike said he saw it go down to 103. What's the deal on the low voltage? Like, why is that not good? Where does it need to be? And when do you need to be concerned? So when your voltage goes low, it takes more current to be able to produce the same amount of power. Could it damage your equipment? Yes, okay. absolutely. Do you start, what, what, what's the like, 90. I need to say something to the campground type number. If it gets below 100 or 103, what's the number? 100 is danger zone. Okay. So, so I'm, you're, I'm watching you're teetering it. On danger I'm zone. watching it right now, and I'm gonna go probably talk to somebody if it starts getting below 100. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 100 okay. is danger zone. This is a $400. Uh, yeah, and th this is the right way to do it. So we have a surge protector. Um, this one's like in the I can't remember 80 to 100 dollar range. I think if you start paying 300 dollars plus, this one only watches for high voltage. That's all the stuff it watches for. If you want low voltage warnings, then you gotta fork out the money <laughs> and do the high dollar ones like the one Mike's got right here. Yeah, this one does everything, yeah. This one starts going off at 103. Oh, wow. I mean, there's a reason that this starts going off when you get below 104. So that bad boy's probably gonna start going off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, if I turn it on, you know, it's teetering on shutting off. And this is why, and I'll show you guys once we get this hooked up, uh, we consider ourselves a tweener. <laughs> or knowing the difference of why there are still advantages of having lithium batteries um, and having the multi plus and having solar and having just different ways that you have this flexibility in case you run into this problem at a campground. Look at this country cuteness right here. Country cuteness? <laughs> Let me see that shirt. Was it? <gasps> Join Smokey's team. All right. Here, I got, some, I got something I need to give you. Here, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> What Don't. is that, Marissa? Tell the audience what this is. Give me a dongle. I hate that word. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not the only one. No, you are. I'm gonna be honest. I don't even know what a dongle is. I've just heard Nathan referencing it over and over, and I'm like, please stop using that word. <laughs> I mean, I'm not the only one that that a word bothers, right? Okay, so a dongle is actually a key integral part of our tweener lifestyle with um, <laughs> so the dongle goes with the multi plus so when you take the dongle and you hook it up the dongle it's like nails uh, <laughs> on a chalkboard some people said your entire voice is like nails on a chalkboard That's wasn't true. that the exact comment we got one time it's true <laughs> has anybody ever said nails on a chalkboard for an australian accent though no because their accent awesome so all dongle comments aside uh this stuff like this is like my favorite part of like a solar lithium install uh, because it is part of what gives you the versatility to be in that tweener spot. You're not just maybe staying overnight a few nights a year and you're at that overnight level and we don't at the same time necessarily have to have everything that somebody who's at the boondocker level, we're not at those different levels where we're not boondocking weeks and months at a time, uh, but we want to know that we have the ability to make things work to do that. Um, so something like this that works with the Multi Plus, which is a key part. So the Multi Plus is an inverter and converter built into one. So it supplies power to the rig when we're plugged up. It controls all that power. 
And, and that's what's cool though, it actually does both. It supplies power to the RV when we don't have power or controls that power, and it controls the power when we are plugged up. Why that's key is because if you're somewhere like here, where we talked about with the pedestal, um, the voltage is actually a little low in this site. This is one of like a million tweener examples, but we can um, tell the MultiPlus to not pull so much power from the pedestal and let the batteries help out. And that keeps our voltage where it needs to be and does not damage our electronics. Another example, if we go to a driveway, or, or this will work here as well, actually. If, you know, if you're somewhere that only has 30 amp, which is what we have here, we only have 30 amp. With only 30 amp, you gotta be careful. You don't want too much running at a time. You don't want like, you know, the, the heater on the washer dryer and the AC and the toaster, like that would, that would, that would trip it. In the tweener mode, <laughs> with the MultiPlus and the dongle, <laughs> I can tell the MultiPlus, hey, we're only getting 30 from outside or maybe 28, whatever I wanna set that at. After that, I want the batteries to pick up the slack. So it's almost like we have actually have 40 amps or 50, you know, we have, we have more than the third, good sneeze buddy. It picks up that slack for things that kind of like push us over 30 amps for a little while. Uh, you know, like the microwave, the toaster, the things that would have normally hair dryer, that doesn't trip the breaker. It just kind of gets help from the batteries, again, because of the MultiPlus and this, and we just keep on chucking along. So one thing you could do here that's pretty neat, since we are next to the river, uh, you can actually load up your kayaks, paddle boards, whatever you've got. You can drop somebody off two or three miles down the road. And you can tell this current, I mean, it's just moving. So you just sort of roll with the current the whole way back. It takes a couple hours to come back with the current. So Marissa left a couple hours ago. She's with actually a group of girls and she's on her way back. They are somewhere down the river. Let's see if we can get them with a drone. Whoa, Whoa it's your drone! There goes the drone! Marissa made it home alive from her paddle boarding experience. I don't even know how many of them were out there. There was like a ton of them out there. Oh, did they see alligators? Yes. Did Marissa fall off her paddle board within 60 seconds of seeing an alligator? Yes. You did awesome. Wow, man, you got really sweaty. <laughs> well, <laughs> I like the story that I swam with gators. There was quite a few boards and two boards collide, go into a tree and... That's what happens, huh? That's what happens. I hope my phone's waterproof. Oh goodness. <laughs> Can't tell you fell in at all. <laughs> but she made it back alive. That is great news. We're glad for that. But I am also pumped for, and I hope you guys are okay with one more B-roll segment, because I feel like this has to be a B-roll segment. Our new solar and lithium setup is done. Man, this thing's clean. <laughs> I mean, it took Mike three days to do this. It was taking me weeks to do this. And not only that, it would not be as clean as this. Everything's strapped. It's perfect length. It's just neatly set up. Oh my goodness. And I don't even know where Mike found. Where did he, where did he even find plexiglass? From what I understand, it's like next to impossible because of all the plexiglass being used in businesses right now. Like crazy awesome. Uh, Thank you, Mike. Awesome install. I've been labeling this install as a tweener install. I understand this is a very, very high-end tweener install. So first, what do we have here? On the roof, I've talked about how we have 1,320 watts on the roof to go along with that solar. We have 800 amp hours of uh, Battleborn lithium. We have always used Battleborn. They have the BMS built into it. They work great. One of the biggest benefits of Battleborn that I've loved, um, not just you know the warranty and the build quality and everything else too, but like you can call them and they actually answer questions and not just 
you know, questions necessarily for the battery. They have great customer support if you're trying to do the whole system yourself. Um, they won't walk you through installing the whole system, but, <laughs> but they won't say, oh, well, you need to call Victron or, oh, well, you need to call, you know, they, they'll do the absolute best they can to answer the questions for the system as a whole, which is what you need because it's super easy with this sort of install to point fingers at, oh, well, it's not our battery. It's, you know, it's the inverter. So beyond the battery, some of the other things we have installed. So this is our 150-100 MPPT, which uh, all the power from the panels is coming down to this. And we do have a shut off here and that power goes from the MPPT into our two Victron multipluses. And probably when I'm talking about like a tweener like install, like these are a huge part of that install. So wherever we're at, these are controlled by Bluetooth, you know, and I can control how many amps come in um, and a lot of other settings within just the Bluetooth app, which is awesome. The short version of what we can run with this setup, we put a soft start on the AC in the master bedroom. Um, so we can run one AC if we just let it run nonstop, no solar. Probably six-ish hours is what we get with that AC. With the solar we've got coming in, I don't know, I'd have to say. <laughs> it depends obviously on how much sun we have coming in. I don't know that it would perpetually like keep that going all day. I think if we had 2,500 plus watts, we could do that with decent sun, just keep the AC going as much as we want. Uh, but again, that's really not our goal. And if we need to, we can just get out, as a tweener, we can just get out the generator on a hot day or overnight or whatever, and let the generator sort of pick up that slack between the two. That was cool, Hensley. Isn't that crazy? Look at that airboat. This is also new for this install. It's an electrical management system. And so basically what that is, uh, when we plug up to shore power at the pedestal, typically I have like a, uh, this looks like a giant surge protector. I don't have to do that anymore. Uh, this is in the rig. It monitors the power the entire time. And then we mount it out here. This is the monitor for the EMS. Uh, and here's all the different codes it's got. So it checks high voltage, low voltage for each multiplus. And it'll tell me what the voltage is coming in on line one, you know, the voltage on line two, it just monitors all that. And then so if the voltage gets below 104, it just cuts it off. Something else that's new, um, I really wanted some manual shutoffs in case I couldn't connect to something or something's wiry and I wanted to not have to crawl way back in there and manually flip off uh, the multipluses. Mike also added some uh, manual switches here for the multi-plus shutoffs and then a shutoff for the whole RV right there as well. And there's lots of reason to go with somebody like Mike. One of them being, I would probably screw this up and I'd have to call Mike anyways, but another one being, um, he's not probably your typical installer you would get at like a dealer or something like that. You can say, hey, I would really like some manual cutoff switches. You can ask for some of these customizations. Typically, I think we would have done six, and we've always done six in the past actually, um, six 100 amp batteries. Uh, we would have had like 2,500-ish watts on the roof. Uh, but I just, I felt like instead of putting that money and time and energy into those panels, I wanted to put that into a couple more batteries because the way we camp, and again, it's the tweener style, like we go to a location, we stay there at max usually a week-ish, and then we go get full hookups or something like that. To me, you wouldn't want to spend a thousand, two thousand dollars on your solar and keep like just two typical wet cell batteries that don't have enough bank to do anything versus it'd almost be better to spend fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars on two or three really good lithium batteries and have no solar, honestly, and just a generator uh, if you're gonna take that money and spend it that way. JJ, you wanna say hi to the camera? Oh. <laughs> What's the matter, buddy? Legos. Is he mad because you're not putting it together right? I don't know. It's like toddler charades 24 7. And... You're losing today, babe. <laughs> JJ, where you going? You look pretty. Oh, well, well, I was going to attend this uh, little women's tea over here. <laughs> Is that what? Wow, look at that. Know, on the river with the lights. Well, Will, she doesn't know this yet, but we tagged him on videos and I said, look, I've got to finish filming this video and see if you can go to the tea with JJ. But um, Marissa, I'm done. Are you? So, <laughs> are you calming down, buddy? It's gonna be me and you. Well, I'll gladly uh, tap out. <laughs> All right. There's no perfect setup. Um, I think the big thing is get out there, get camping, and start to see what your style of camping is. And then from that, try to determine if you're an overnighter, if you're a hardcore boondocker, if you're a tweener, wh wh whatever it is, try to figure out what your needs are and then go from there. I can still hear Marissa losing toddler charades over there. <laughs> so I'm gonna go help her out. Until next video, we'll see you on the next journey. JJ, come here. Can you say bye-bye? <laughs>